Many poor people in developing countries do not have access to the food they need. But as we look forward over the next 50 or so years, we will need to increase production and productivity at the same time as doing it in a way that is more environmentally friendly in the past and is also more socially inclusive. We've got to make sure that the footprint of agriculture on climate is less. We have to make sure that we don't degrade our soils, we don't degrade the water, we don't have adverse effects on biodiversity. So there are some major challenges but we believe that combining local and traditional knowledge with formal knowledge, we can meet that challenge. We have to put high priority on our research agenda and we have to at the same time use those technologies that are, have a much lower footprint on the environment. There are ways to much more efficiently use the water. There are ways to use less pesticides, less fertilizers. So much of the knowledge that we've already got can be applied. We have many of the agricultural technologies that we need for today. We need to combine classical plant breeding with organic farming, with some of the forms of biotechnology, nanotechnology, information and communication technology. All of these can help meet many of the challenges that we have. There are some challenges that will need further advances in science and technology. Climate change threatens agricultural productivity and agriculture threatens climate change. So we need to make our seeds more temperature tolerant, drought tolerant, pest tolerant and salinity tolerant. And so there are challenges that we will need advances. But as long as we do apply the best knowledge we have in both the public and private sector, making sure we understand the needs of the poorest of the poor throughout the developing world, we can achieve this. We need to act on what we know already and combine that with continued investment in research and development in both the public and the private sector. We have had significant increases in production, but we haven't always met the needs of the 800 million people that are still hungry today or are malnourished today. Equally, at the same time, we have to worry about those increasing obesity levels. That we, at the same time, we have hungry people and unfortunately rather overweight people. So there's some real challenges in the agricultural sector, not only to provide the amount of food, but nutritious food that is healthy. I think it's indeed true that much of the emphasis to date has been in areas that have missed bypassed the 800 million people. What our document argument argues for is putting more emphasis on those that live in rain-fed areas that don't have the luxury of irrigation. Those areas where people are too poor to afford all of the inputs, the better seeds, the inputs such as fertilizers and some of the pesticides. And so our challenge is how to actually work with small-scale farmers and empower them to li liberate their knowledge in conjunction with the knowledge that we're currently getting out of the formal sector.